Having been silenced for 10 years throughout the sibling sexual abuse, after speaking out, after that isolation, I feel as if the gag has been lifted. A real sense of, yes, being alive, I'm no longer hiding. I, I think there's very little awareness around sibling sexual abuse. We've got to speak about this horrible thing. It's difficult to talk about. People don't like hearing about it, but it's the only way we can fix it because it can't happen if it's exposed. It can only happen in silence. People don't assume that it happens between siblings. They always assume it's parents and children or uncles. It's always an adult. But I think if people knew about it more, then they'd recognise the signs more in their own homes. A lot of the time you think, this is not happening to anybody else, or it's just like a, an isolated incident for you in your life, when the reality is, as the report sort of um, brought out, is that actually this is happening a lot more and it's a lot more widespread. Um, seven when the abuse started um, <clears throat> so and then I didn't tell anybody until I was 32 so it's um, like 25 years of just me knowing and obviously him knowing and it's such a long time to hold such a, a, a deep and dark secret. My childhood me and my sister had a good relationship we did all the normal sister things you know argued but then would play out and then play Barbies and it was sort of like the abuse always happened on a night so the days were always very normal and I don't think I ever really recognised it as abuse as well because it was positioned as play it was like well let's play mums and dads type thing. So at seven I just knew I didn't like what he was doing to me I didn't understand and it it was just revolting, disgusting, and the difficulty when you're being abused is the fear. We're not bruised, we're not beaten, we're scared into silence. And what we're told is that if you speak out, the family will all fall apart. The family has already fallen apart. So staying silent longer is only postponing the pain. For me, personally, for me, it was a choice of either tell my family or end my life. <laughs> that was the point that I got to. And I, di I didn't want to die. I didn't want him to take that as well. He'd taken so much already. It's about believing in your own ability to be able to, to just say, this is what happened and, and feel all right with that. None of it is your fault. I didn't decide to disclose, it was my brother. So I didn't know that it happened to my brother. I just thought it was just me. It was difficult because I'm not sure that people believed him or thought he was maybe exaggerating, you know? But when I said it too then, they realized that it actually had happened. And then from, from then, it sort of, not really been discussed again, but it sort of sits there in the family like an elephant in the room. Um, so I told my family, um, they confronted my brother and he, he admitted it all. He said, yeah, it, it's true. Everything that Kath said is true. And then my mum encouraged me to go to the police. 
but in, in, in my case, he was protected by a, a law um, called Dolly and Capax, which basically means because he was 14, he didn't know if he was, what he was doing was right or wrong. I still like, I still personally, I don't think that he, he has been held accountable for what he did. I don't think she really like sees herself as done anything wrong. I think she's apologized once. But I remember on the day that it was disclosed, she was there and I ended up comforting her. I was like, it's all right. You know, she was very upset. I don't think she understands the magnitude of what was caused for us. I don't want justice, if you know what I mean. I just want her to acknowledge what's happened and for her to know that it was wrong. We met in a public place and um, he said all the right things, everything was great. And just as he's walking out the door, he kisses me on the cheek. And I just thought, you haven't understood a single thing of what you've done to me. And then I realized there's only one thing left I can do and it's go to the police. And he was arrested and it went to court and he was found not guilty. It was disappointing and I was very, very upset the day of the verdict. But then I, as the weeks went by and the months went by, I felt great because the burden was no longer on my shoulders. It's as if life only begins once you've started that process. Disclosure is hard and it will be hard, but things can get better and you can restore relationships and things. I decided, I think, to keep a relationship with her because I don't see her as that 10, 11, 12 year old and the 30 year old that she is now. I'm glad that we're able to move past it. it. Only you will know when it's right to disclose, but I think it's just so important that, that you choose you and, and sort of say, you know, actually I've been carrying this and I've been living this fake life and I'm done. I'm not gonna keep that shame and I'm not gonna keep that self-doubt and um, not feeling like I deserve things. I don't want that anymore, I don't want to feel like that. I want to feel like I do deserve it. And I want other people to feel like they deserve it, that they deserve the life that they want.